Good afternoon and welcome back to Network One on One, where we put together two people who may or may not have met each other and see if there's some synergy between them. Today I put together Jeff Fox from Princeberry Productions and Star Fox Media with Spencer Horde from Unusual Alchemy. For you film industry folks, you're really gonna like this, even if you're just interested in the industry and the inner workings of it. We talk about uh, shooting in LA versus shooting in Vista, the new film-friendly city. We talk about music videos versus full film feature productions. There's a lot of great conversation going on here, and I really like how these two got together. I think they're gonna to work together in the future. Maybe it's another successful combination. You guys let me know what you think. Always like, subscribe, comment, network one-on-one. -on -one. I think we're doing good. What do we got here? All right. So we're supposed to introduce ourselves, it looks like. Uh, name, occupation, name of business, and years in your field. Ooh. Do you want to go first? I feel to? like I'm a freshman again in college. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Um, yes, I am Spencer William Horde, H-O-R-D, and I'm a filmmaker at heart, director, writer, but all around production Swiss army knife. Mm. Um, name a business. I don't really, I just started one, but it was kind of like a, let's just pick a name. Yeah. But I called it unusual alchemy. Ooh. And I don't have an answer to why other than I <laughs> like those. T I liked alchemy. Mm. I feel like what I'm doing is, is, is alchemy in a way the yeah. most modern form of it and mm -hmm. just trying to throw words together. And, and, and I think it was between three and my wife liked unusual the most. So yeah. we went with it. Unusual. Alchemy. Yeah. I mean, I like that. The idea uh, of like turning something into gold, like, you yep. know, turning iron into gold, <laughs> turning, uh, being a magician, strange video clips that people <laughs> do into gold. <laughs> well, yeah, you're also, you know, performing uh performing some type of uh magic trick on your mm -hmm. on your on your audience that's if you too. do it well yeah uh years in my field oh like i started when i was 10 um but professionally like but i just call it my first internship at like 19 19 so i'm 31 12 years okay yeah 12 years yeah pretty solid yeah <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I'm Jeff Fox, and um, I have a couple different occupations, I guess I could say. Um, I have two companies that I run and kind of halfway a third. Uh, my first production, uh, I have a production company, a video production, co uh, film production company that focuses almost almost entirely on the business side. Like mm -hmm. we pretty much don't do any of the creative stuff. We do mostly um, development, pre-production, um, we do financing, distribution, marketing, basically all the ancillary things that filmmakers don't necessarily know how to do. Yep. <laughs> so that was the first company I had in uh, this building in the, in the film hub, um, that I, um, did. And then I also have a video production and marketing company called Star Fox Media that we have also in this building, um, you know, does podcast productions and uh, mm -hmm. we do whole marketing plans for businesses and basically focus on mostly small to small local businesses and do all their digital marketing, advertising, email marketing, social media, website design, graphic design, like basically just, we try to be like outsourced yeah. marketing departments for companies. So um, that's a lot of stuff, man. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, and we're also in the process of putting together a film festival right now. So Ooh. that would be like a third one. Like a, um, like a local one. Yeah. Like a Vista one. So, Oh, cool. Um, we're, 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 it's still in the, the ground phases, but so that's going to be kind of a third occupation, I guess. I remembered, <laughs> uh, while you were talking that I have a, I had a business that we just dissolved me and a business partner, mm -hmm. um, that was in LA. So like a production company, but we, we, I moved out of LA mm -hmm. and then we did a lot of basically like music video production work. Oh yeah. And some like documentary work mm -hmm. and that's just in the past, like formally. Right. But like 
getting back into LA and like working, I'll always work with those same people and stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah great. Rela- I mean, you keep those relationships. You find good teams mm-hmm. that you like working with. It's like, that's gold right there. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, that's your, I always tell people like the, the whole networking thing is kind of a lie, like going mm-hmm. to network events. Yeah. You can get, you can get a good leg in somewhere, but that's not like where you can find your network. You find your network after like five, 10 years of like going to, battle with these people yeah. you know, like in the <laughs> trenches and you have each other's back and you've probably gotten a few fights, probably mm-hmm. 10 to a hundred and you just keep grinding away and you trust each other and that's yeah. your network. And if you have five to 10 in your network, you're set. Mm-hmm. That's and I mean, honestly need. with, with how like, you know, being able to get through those fights and those and come up with a resolution, like that's what I think makes good partners. Right. It's because there's oh, yeah. always going to be in creative fields, like, a lot going on, right? With oh, yeah, and things that can go wrong, and <laughs> the the memories are just replaying Vietnam flashbacks right now. <laughs> Jeez. So, and I guess um, uh, years in the occupation, I I didn't get uh, I don't have a background in film. My background is actually in business, and I went to business school, graduated with a business degree, and worked for a film company. So I ended up doing mostly marketing stuff in school, and got hired for a, to do the marketing for a production company oh nice and so really entry-level stuff and now i'm a partner in it so oh cool <laughs> okay who were your early influences in film or video okay that's a solid question early how early okay let's go first steven spielberg easy second just generally kung fu ninja movies mm. spoofs um, I really like airplane mm-hmm. and space balls from an early young age. Yeah. And then kill bill Tarantino mm. and that kind of sent me into film school. Mm. Um, Oh, and also like with video, like fuse TV, do those music videos. I was, I was crushing in eighth grade. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was like the era when you could still find music videos on general television, mm-hmm. right? Like, are you on, they, on they cable? were still like, your average budget was probably still a quarter million dollars and up, mm-hmm. which now it's like 15, probably 15,000. <laughs> yeah. They expect you to do a lot with a little mm-hmm. these days, don't they? Like, oh, we, yeah. we'll do some music videos at Star Fox media, but not often. It's mostly like yeah. local artists and stuff that we have, we have a video crew. So we can do that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I did, I did enough of the, uh, no budget stuff in my, in my early twenties. And, um, I'm glad I did it. Like you have to do it. Like I had to be producer, director, editor, Mm -hmm. uh, art PA, you know, getting, getting all the production design stuff running around town. Um, and then like, it gets to the point where you realize the actual number and like the number, but depending, this is like a, assuming it's a like low level creative idea, like it's, mm-hmm. it's eight to 15 K and you're not even making like your money back right. like that's to, like to just break even making an okay hourly rate. And, like yeah. Just and you, you for your time <laughs> then like, and then if you want to do something really special, um, with some gloss to it, you know, with some high production value, you're, you're not going to smell anything like that until you're, you're spending like 30 K mm-hmm. and above 50 K, but even still it's like, you're still crunching. You're still yeah. like begging your production designer to just cut their rate <laughs> or something. Yeah. Bring your own furniture, dude. We, <laughs> yeah. No, we have, we've definitely had like, you know, little 30 second commercials and stuff like that, that have budgets like yeah. up over 15 grand. And you're like, so mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, you want to music videos, almost never just single location, right? And yeah, like single yeah. look, single everything. So it's like multiple production days, multiple, like with yeah. big crews and stuff. And these agencies just want cut, 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 yeah. cut, cut, cut. It's like, <laughs> damn, man. Interesting. So like the Fuse music video is a good influence, definitely. And the, those are like way easier to make. I, like when, when you have that much money and you're just like shooting the band, singing the song with maybe like, with the exception of ones that like go really heavy into like a narrative B story or a right. story, like mm-hmm. so easy. We'll have to show you some of the music videos we worked on. It'd be fun to yeah, get definitely. To on what we did for pennies and see what you think. Like, yeah, yeah. Mateo, pull them up. No. <laughs> <laughs> for me again, like since I didn't really start in film or video until my twenties, um, I had a very, like all the movies that I liked growing up, like they weren't like, 
you know, films for filmmakers, right? But like my favorite ones were all those old action movies like Gladiator mm-hmm. and um, like Patriot and um, the 300. Oh, like, yeah, dude. Those movies you know, get like little kids fired up. Yeah. Like I was, I was like maybe middle school to when did, when did, I feel like 300 came out when I was a freshman in high school, which was 2000. Mm. Was it 2006? Mm. 2005 it was probably a little before it was probably in the early 2000s i would say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. mid to early 2000s that so like, dude I, I crushed like a monster energy before mm-hmm. i went in and just it was it was like you walked out of there the just like jacked, flexing. yeah just <laughs> you came out jacked, jacked. yeah I, came out, I went in a child and came out a man yeah for sure I thought those are the kind of movies I liked. I also liked a lot of those like, uh, like kind of B action movies, like the, yeah. like the underworlds and like the, you know, where they're not necessarily like, you know, mm. big budget, crazy things, but fun, yeah. you know, just fun. Action are you an eighties movie guy? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, but you know, cause those go, those go pretty hard they for do. like just, <laughs> and I do just pure action, but there's a little mm-hmm. bit of like, I mean, for, it, it, with modern movies, like there's just better action, you know. Yeah. So it's like you you gotta you, you gotta sus- have a like suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. But yeah, some I'm, people can do it. I don't really like eighties movies personally, mm-hmm. but I, I like the I like the superficial aesthetics of them. I, I like like the eighties, like the kung fu movies, dope. like those yeah. kind of, like those kind of like you know big those, Arnie, big, yeah, big Arnie, like those just are muscle fun. guys, so so funny. fun. And my business partner actually worked on a lot of those in the eighties and nineties. So oh really? He said he, he them and some of those like big action stars would get together, and knock out like like four movies in like in like two months, <laughs> <laughs> just what? and just like put them go straight to DVD, like oh you know, gosh. and release them in like Europe for and make all their money there. Like it was really funny. <laughs> what B movie like comes top of mind? Uh, I don't uh, know. Like the That'll recent one that you like or whatever. Um, I don't know. I can't think of one right now. Oh, I yeah. haven't watched a whole lot of stuff recently. There was a very like weird experience that I had like in the like in the film industry where I stopped enjoying a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And so, same one thing that like I I did do a film festival a little while back, and um, and when I and for this film festival, like I did a lot of the screenings. And so I was watching like a, like, Oh no, a bunch of how like, many, how many a day? Um, four or five, maybe a day okay. for like a, features? a couple Shorts. weeks features. And it was like, so I probably watched 20, 30 films or something like that in a couple weeks. And like, of course there, and this wasn't large, like, you know, Sundance, like did you did take, film did festivals. Did you take sunlight like, breaks? Or yeah. How did you stay sure. alive? That's crazy. I don't think I did. No. <laughs> um, I think I'm a different person ever since then. But like, it's been really like, I watch so few films now. Like after mm-hmm. that, there was, there was like a defining moment in my life where I, I watch a lot less films. I'm, I'm getting back into it. I actually watch a lot more TV and like, you know, series and like things like that because I think. For some reason, yeah. I think that they don't remind me as much of that. They don't get, they don't give me the Vietnam flashbacks. Yeah. And the <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, okay. So did you go to school to study your profession or learn on the job? What will you advise is the best way to get educated in your field? Hmm. Yes. Yes. Learn on the job. Boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to school. I uh, went to, I went to SC for production and, it was great, but I tell like my dad and people and it pisses my dad off the most. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. I mentioned it to him like he paid for handshakes, not an education mm-hmm. man because, and it's not like I didn't get a good education there. I did, but I felt pretty hamstrung for, for a lot of mm-hmm. reasons. And it just naturally happens when you're just with so many students, but absolutely you're not like the only reason I say that is because like, if I didn't get so much time on set after that, I wouldn't realize how much different being on set, Mm -hmm. being actually cutting projects, editing things where the pressure is on to perform. Uh, this is, this is where you learn because you're forced to, Uh, it's the real world. I think that that's a good way of saying it. So like, we're here to interrupt your regular podcast listening and ask you to join us at odd pairing podcast. Yes. It's Paige and I, and we are here every week now on Fridays. And we talk about adult beverages and the community, a little bit of the history of it, and we are just going on a nice little journey. And you can hear other people's drinking stories. So why wouldn't you want to listen? That's the best part. That is the best part. Cheers. Cheers.
Hello friends, I'm Joe Samo. I'm an attorney in San Diego and I'm the host of Run It By My Lawyer. It's a great podcast where you will learn a lot about the law and it is very entertaining if I say so myself. And uh, you could get it for free anywhere you get your podcasts and you could follow us on Instagram at Run It By My Lawyer. I've always told people when they ask me like how important it is to go to film school or mm-hmm. to like, you know, if any kind of the creative kinds of programs like there's there's certain things that you have to go to school for because you need the you know doctor you know like those yeah. like things like those kind of letters after your name uh-huh. but anything that's like in the creative fields what you need to do is the creative thing over and over and over again and hone your craft work on as many projects as you can and that's yep. how you learn the one thing that's good about school is it forces you to work on a lot of projects. So if you're not mm-hmm. a self-starter, like you just can't get yourself to finish a project or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. like maybe it's good for people like that. Um, like if you're true, not good at true. looking up things on YouTube and like, you know, like different techniques and how to achieve different things, like, and you don't want, if you're not a self-starter, maybe it's good for those things, but yeah. a good hardworking self-starting person, if you just go make three films with your friends, you'll learn more in that than probably like, <laughs> yeah, no. And, and especially if you, if you watch old movies, um, I was talking to a friend about this actually this morning. Um, you kind of like as a director, you put yourself like in the movie these days, like in a way like you're supposed to. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people who are work their way through film school or through the industry and are like, I'm going to work my way up to be a director. Like, like me, um, are a little hamstrung by these other people who are self starters who just, yeah, because if they know movies and they know they love them and they have this passion, mm-hmm. they get to come into like their first like on set experience as a director with pure, just mm-hmm. pure energy. Mm-hmm. That's like untainted by everything they've seen mm-hmm. or past jobs that have maybe gotten in their head or, mm-hmm. you know, problems. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's cool. Like it guys like cool. Tarantino, I think it's cool that they were just at a video store and he was just, honestly just such a good writer Mm -hmm. and he really went to school for acting not directing and he just knows so much about movies so good at writing them Mm -hmm. that as soon as he made reservoir dogs it was all over yeah yeah absolutely i mean i think that there's such an important part of like writing and directing go so hand in hand that are like because i mean like directing is almost like rewriting the movie again and it's almost like editing is the third time you're rewriting it it's yeah, like you yeah. you write the script then you rewrite it when you're directing it and you rewrite it again when you're editing it and it's so it's, true, it's, true. it's like story and how that's everything flows and the pacing and all that you can't get pacing on a page you can only get it on it like on a set and so mm-hmm. and like on in an editing suite and so it's like so interesting like yeah and you find a good editor will find something you never saw in it there's a I don't know if, if, if you know, but apparently the first cut of Austin Powers w- had the studio really, really worried. Like, Interesting. was horrible. Um, Jay Roach, the director, was kind of panicking. His, he, his career was kind of just starting out, so this could have completely tanked his career. Um, then hired new editor, some chick, who just like kind of got the humor a little better mm-hmm. and the beats right, and it's Austin Powers. Destroyed it. Destroyed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, That's the, I finding things, movies. you know, I'm, just little things you don't expect and just like kind of understanding that like, like you said, it's, it's, it's a new version of writing, mm-hmm. but it's also more than that. It's composing. It's, yeah. it's, 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 if film combines so many different things like music and mm-hmm. uh, people think music and film means the score. It actually means the editing because that's how, Mm. that's how time flows in a, in a movie. And with, with music, it's, it's the art of time and tonality Mm -hmm. itself and and tempo. And so, so so yeah, the, the edit is, is key. Yeah. Well, we got a new one, uh, feature films versus music videos, which is a more fun experience. Ooh, I, it's tough because like I don't really I don't really head on to feature film sets very often. As soon as like the film gets in production, my mm-hmm. job is kind of done. And so like that that's I don't get to enjoy the creative side on the films. But I do like one of my favorite things in the world is figuring out how to solve problems and, and how to make film ideas work. 
Yeah. And so taking like a concept and turning it into like, you know, a, a, a con like taking a, a idea, turning it into a concept, take the concept, turn it into a story or a script, yeah. take that and turn it into a, like a business plan. Right. Like, and how, mm-hmm. how we're going to actually do this. Like I do enjoy that part, but comparing that wow. to like being on set with a camera and like a music, like playing the music and having the, you know, artist like the, it's, it's, they're so different. I don't know if I could really, what do you, what do you <laughs> love about breaking down a script like that? Like, especially a 90 pager, like why, mm-hmm. Do you just like have a, an, like an accountant brain or something? Like what's going on? That's so interesting. I wouldn't say that it's like the budgeting piece that like, so what I really like to do is take, so people, like, I think that almost any film can work Mm. at the right budget with the right target market. So if it's done correctly, where you make a good match between your idea, who the audience is for it and your budget, you can make a successful film. And so figuring out that mix for me is like what like I really enjoy. So it's like we're not necessarily like budgeting to the penny and going through like and and doing the doing the line producer stuff and like breaking down the schedule, getting a schedule, making the schedule and breaking it into a budget and all that. It's more of like if we do this in the one to three million dollar range and we have this target market and this audience, like I think we can make this work. And so those that really high level conceptual stuff up front is like really fun for me. So you're already thinking of the marketing budget, basically. We'll ever yeah, give them a yeah, dollar, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's that's super interesting. You know, because we're doing a lot of um, a lot of film finance stuff, mm-hmm. and so if we're going to go to an investor with a film, like I need to be able to answer their questions, right? Like that's yeah. And so they're not going to ask me like how good is the film going to be. They're going to ask me like how am I going to get my money back. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So, I don't. I don't know how it works. Um, yeah. So what my my answer to is it going to be a good film is like well I have a good team. Yeah. And so they're going to make you a good film, but like yeah, this true, is why it's going to make money. You have to have an audience. <laughs> yeah. Or or you know release it for free and pay for it yourself. Yeah. That'll be fun. There's 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 <laughs> there's strategies that make that work right. And so um, for me I I think it's hard. I enjoy the the film part like just the, the that like problem solving kind of side of like figuring yeah. out the budgets and stuff and being on set is kind of stressful for me. I don't even like it, but <laughs> okay. um, I, I, I worked at a, as a script reader at one of these type of companies mm-hmm. and super, I was super young and a little green, um, but similar, like you had the two executive producers um, in the office just running um so much different stuff and like they don't even go on set like they'll, right. they'll show up on set if they need to and like i assumed it was all like la production companies where it's like the, everyone's kind of doing it right um you can get on set if you want but they they're they're they were doing international financing for like academy award sphere a24 sphere movies yeah. mm-hmm. and it was on another level the, the, the I was glad I experienced it, but I didn't want to be in the office. I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm the, yeah. I'm the get, get me on set. Um, or just get me in like an edit bay or just let me, mm-hmm. you know, let me get outside when I, when I'm over that. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I've always liked being on set, but the problem yeah. is I try and do too much. Like I'm right. trying to PA while directing, you know, mm-hmm. and I just need, I need, I need producers to protect me. Yeah. That's, yeah, I like that's to, I like and that's to usually so when I'm on set on the on films, it's usually specifically to do that kind of stuff where it's like just make sure that all the people, the roles are working mm-hmm. and stuff. And mm-hmm. then like after everything's like going and it's good, like I'm like, all right, cool. My job, my work here is done. I'll, I'd love to see what it looks like after it's done. <laughs> yeah, that's my me and my business partner. Uh, his, his name's Joe. Uh, he we would always be in one, either one of two shoot situations. One shit has hit the fan before the first mm-hmm. shots off and mm-hmm. everything's just like, all right, we're rolling with it. We're riding the tiger mm-hmm. or two, which is like where we are always trying to get to that, that, that golden, that golden spot. Um, I'm locked in, mm-hmm. I'm dialed. I don't go to him unless I really need something. I have an AD. Mm-hmm. He's schmoozing client, you know, he's talking, he's having a good time. He's thinking of, two, three projects ahead right. with whoever people like you who would show up on set who, who aren't, he's the line producer and mm. the exec producer type person. Yeah. So he does have to be there 
like all day, but it's like, so people, when you show up kind of have a good time, talk, chat, make sure you guys don't have to see anything that stresses you out. Yeah. You know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And that's when it was always working well. I'm always like the, you know, like, ah, did I charge all the batteries? Like all the, you know, like the, the little stuff. Yeah, and the it's walkies. like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, collect geez. all the walkies. No. Never. You never do. Ooh. The gremlins get them. Yeah. So I was at the script reading company when I was a little green in the industry. And that was cool. I never really got the feature film on set experience because I was more doing, uh, Commercials, music videos, branded content, short films, et cetera. Um, my goal is to direct and produce feature films. Yeah, 100%. Hmm. Um, so like feature films are much better, but it's hard to compare because I see, I see music videos at this, as this fully like almost, almost separate, but definitely like adjacently uh, tangential, like medium itself mm-hmm. um, where you're, where you're, building, you know, you're building a visual world from the soundtrack, from yeah. the textures of the sounds, from the lyrics. Um, that's your script, but it's, it's audio, right? Mm-hmm. Which is cool, which is fun. And it's just, it's, it's more, you know, you're, be honest with yourself. You're, you're doing this actually for people on their phones. Right. For the most part. Yeah. So you got to, you know, it's three minutes. You got to realize they're probably only going to watch the first 30 seconds for the most part. Um, and you get, you just got to hit them with that sauce right up, right up yeah, from right the get go. Right. And it's fun. And it's like this mm-hmm. self contained little thing that can actually go like s- stop the world. It feels like one music video, like, like a uh, childish Gambino, uh, mm. this is America comes to mind. Yeah. Um, then there was, Kendrick Lamar was, had a pretty solid one. Uh, what was that? But then, then the, I mean, everyone, everyone knows that like there's, then there's like some Rihanna videos that there's like everyone's seen, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and these are, these are obviously like major pop stars, but it, I just think it's cool that there is, there is kind of a psychic opportunity to get your work in front of like millions of people's like, phone on their Mm -hmm. commute or whatever during their week at the same time and then watching your work. And I feel like in terms of what you're watching your phone, the, the music video is probably the most like elevated form of art Mm -hmm. in in general. Like, you know what? That's kind of funny because like you have a lot of room to work with the music video mm because like you can choose to have a story. You can choose to be literal with your story and like tell a story using the song as like kind of the background. You can be kind of more like adjacent and tell like, you know, something else. You can be very just visual and just show the give the feeling like, you know, you can be so loose or so specific. Exactly. The best briefs I get from like sales rep is like the band doesn't want to be in the video or the artist doesn't want to be in the video. Listen to the song and send something back, you know. Wow. Or they'll place it in, and and like, usually the, like a, a smart band won't really put your idea in a box too much. Right. Um, I do appreciate parameters at mm-hmm. times, especially if I'm not digging the song so much. Mm. But like, if the song hits me, like I'm gonna mm-hmm. go with what my muses tell me, and like yeah. the, the, like having those uh having having those headphones on and and just listening to the song and like cooking up an idea where like you don't have to worry about like artist talent, um, which they're not actors, so you can expect them to. And, right. you know, they, they, they just need to look cool and, yeah. and pretty, that's to be how, honest, and like make like, sure they're swagging and stylish yeah. and, like, get the trends or trying to break the trends or mm-hmm. whatever. Whereas, like, if, 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 if you – some of them just want to, like, see – see their shit come to life as like a film or a short film. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can go which all is, way Which is that, fun, right? which is fun, but it's a lot of pressure, but mm-hmm. I yeah. like it. Do you have any that um, like you really liked working on or anything like in particular? Yeah. One that comes to mind is uh, I got in touch with Jarrell Jerome. He's an actor who was in that series uh, when they see us about the central park five. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've seen it, he's the, he's the dude at the end who's like in jail and in the, in solitary. He started, I got connected with him through a manager um, and he started like out 
just loving like hip hop and rap and mm. he just fell into acting and it's just so good. You know, he was in moonlight as well. Mm. Um, and then he just like, was like, Oh, let's do a music video. And like, I was just like in his corner and met him and we, we clicked. And so that one, Jarrell Jerome, uh, for real, I believe it's called. And then there's another one, like not in the hip hop space, like more like electronic indie space by this Australian DJ duo, like producer group named Hermitude. Mm-hmm. That one's cool because we got to create like a world and I was just trying to create like a more kind of like the the edges of like what maybe a Blade Runner world mm-hmm. looks like, like what's on the very far edges of that. Yeah. Um, and shooting it in a way that's more trashy, but still has like, we use the actual Blade, Blade Runner lenses on it too. So, oh yeah that and so it really it really popped um but those two come to mind yeah those are those were and those were you know ones where i kind of had to put a lot of my rate into the budget um just to just because i was just so into the project and like now that i'm a dad it's like i'm not going to do that and i'm going to make sure i'm working with producers who (laughs) who don't let me do that, you know, I'll like, I'll sign a waiver or whatever and just Mm -hmm. like make it like legally binding that if I like throw any of my rate into the budget, like, no. Yeah. Favorite equipment. Oh, airy, anything airy. Yeah. Anything Panavision. What is our favorite equipment to use? Yeah. Those are, I mean, those are some killer brands, right? Like anything that they make is just amazing. Right. Um, I've really enjoyed, let's see. Hmm. There's some stuff I want to work with. Like, I, mm. I think gimbal stuff is really cool. Like, I yeah. love working with gimbals. Like, gimbals are, like, where you can get these, like, moving... Like, because camera movement, I think, is such a big deal. Yeah. And I think camera movement used to be very difficult and expensive. Yeah. And so, like, if you wanted to have professional, smooth camera movement in your shots back in, like, the eight, like the 90s... Like you needed dollies, you needed like, you know, I mean, tracks, yeah, the beta version of a steady cam yeah. even was around. Exactly. And so like the idea that like for like 600 bucks, you can buy an electronic gimbal mm-hmm. and slap like a smaller, like smaller production camera, yeah. like black magic. Also or, drones. You can get uh, mm-hmm. God's perspective for a, for a cheap price you have at to Walmart. Get a helicopter. Like yeah. you'd, have to, you'd have to rent <laughs> a helicopter crazy. and a, a helicopter crew yeah. to get those same shots that you can pick up with a $1,500 like, DJI yeah. guy. Like, well, so I think some of that stuff yeah. is super cool. Uh, what would I want to shoot on? Oh, robot arm. Ooh. Easy, easy robot arm. Um, Zeke, make it happen. Let's yeah. get the robot arm. You gotta get there. a robot arm. Those are so like is is that's the ones where you can like program it to like do this the shot go, over and exactly over yeah, and over but again. They go like super fast. So yeah. you can like every angle like like this. And it mm-hmm. one, it moves fast, but two, it it records the motion capture data. So like you can mm-hmm. if you if you leave it where it is, you can throw anything else in there and then composite a hundred different things together that's in one so- frame. Very I thought easily. it was really cool because yeah, you, if you if it's doing the exact same shot multiple times and you're just switching out the subject, you can do really cool mm-hmm. stuff that you, it would be hard to do by hand, right? Yeah, to like match up the subjects in the frame and like yeah, all that. although like, although AI is taking over the world right cool. now, so it That's might true. be it might be easy. Yeah, this might be them. a different conversation next week. <laughs> hard, yeah, hard hard for humans. So working in Burbank versus Vista. <laughs> 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 well, I never worked in Burbank, but I was telling Zeke that it's an interesting parallel. Mm-hmm. Um, That's true. I would love it if like when Nickel opened up a spot down here, you know, um, those, those, all those gear houses that I would venture to, to get like random stuff for my DPs or my key grip. Um, I'm not sure where if there is there is there even a like G, major g and e shop in vista yet uh, i don't think so no i mean even the closest ones there's gonna be some kind of closer to san diego like downtown yeah. kind of stuff but i see um, it though you know what i mean like that's why people, burbank but, like yeah. i see it and i see like those buildings right over there um on that main that main street sorry i'm a noob here new guy but yeah. no worries 
the it's pretty I don't know it's it's got Vista has what Burbank used to have that I think it lost um which was a lost in time feeling mm. um you get it a little bit in um towards Ventura yeah uh, over that way but yeah, I feel like I can pop up anywhere, throw a phone booth on a corner and turn this turn this into like a neo noir scene or straight up in the 70s, you know. That's so which true. is which is cool. Yeah. Um it's got some flavor um around. And Burbank does have that, but it's just too, it's LA. There's just so yeah. much going on. So for shoots, I mean, I think one of the things that's really awesome at working here versus up in you know the radius for la you know yeah. is that there's less shoots down here so they're not as like they're not as focused on things like permitting and stuff like that now that being said uh, we did just work with the film hub to get the city of vista to waive all firm film permits for the cost of all firm film permits for the next two years oh, which is yeah pretty sweet um so i think there's just a liaison that you work with they get you a permit they it's free and then you can shoot mm. you know and coordinate they basically there's only charges if you have to shut down streets or anything like that you know and mm. they have to send out people to block traffic and stuff but you know for most shoots like it's completely free to film in vista which is so i mean i know that the the rates up in you know la county can be kind of uh, steep for if you're doing a smaller shoot like yeah if you're doing like one of those like you know you know fifteen thousand dollar or less music videos like it might turn into a double digit percent you know, yeah. in, uh, of your budget just in permits. And, and so, especially if you want to expedite them, it's usually, yeah. it's usually not that bad most places because they want you to shoot and pay the location fee, right? right? Rather than the permit fee yeah, and to keep things going. But it's like, it's a two week, you know, turnaround. And a lot of these things just happen so quickly mm-hmm. that you need to have oh, basically, the day. you need to have a coordinator hired from the jump to, to be all over that. And it's mm-hmm. like, I don't have a budget to put a coordinator two weeks before the shoot. It's like, you're coming on day before the shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe someday, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Film friendly Vista. I mean, they're trying to, uh, trying to bring films down here. And I yeah. think that's one of the ways they're doing it is they're trying to like, you know, make the permitting process easy. They're trying to make a liaison you can work with and like make it so, you know, everyone can find how to do it. It's supposed to be like really easy and straightforward. So which I think on the, on, for the most part, when you're doing shoots, sim- simple is just so much. It's worth, I feel like it's worth a lot. I feel like this canal that's like a hundred feet away from us right now. You know, the one around the corner yep. I'm talking about mm-hmm. every time I pass by there, I'm like, I just want to hop over there and shoot a murder scene or something. You know, it's, <laughs> it's got that vibe. It's got, reminds me of brick. Um, the Ryan Johnson movie, they shot that in San Clemente, mm. similar, similar vibes here in Vista. You can get that, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yeah, that was a cool one. Yeah. That was that was a cool movie, but um yeah, you get that you get that timeless feel and you know, there's there's just I, I see that canal and I'm like there's something there. Yeah. I, I can Am I going to get in trouble here. if I just jump the fence and start shooting? <laughs> Maybe. I thought it was film know. friendly. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you just show like you just tell the officer, "Aren't we in film I thought this was film friendly yeah, Vista." I thought this was America. I thought this was yeah, exactly the same <laughs> you have the same tone of voice. But I thought this was Vista. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, LA for me is like, you know, I I love that I don't have to live there. <laughs> is, oh, yeah. is that a is that, does that mean? <laughs> no, I'm, I when I drive in now, it's like exciting because I mm. I'm going back in to where I lived for like 11 years, mm. and I know in the back of my mind I'll get to leave and go home, you yeah. know, and not just be like trapped I get to in the go city. up there for the business, right? Like yeah. when I go to LA, probably twice a month maybe Mm -hmm. i'd say these days and it's i schedule two or three meetings i you know put them back to back to back you know and i i just go up there for the day hit up my meetings and come back home and it's all in one day and it's great um i even try to schedule them so that they're done before traffic really starts and stuff Mm -hmm. like that like it's you know and i'm able to do that because like this is close enough yeah i uh i moved down this way to be closer to parent to my parents Mm -hmm. uh when, when I was having my first kid with my wife Smart. Oh. and I remember visiting them before I was moving down here and it was always kind of like that drive back into LA was so yeah. dreadful. Whereas like now it's like, Oh, going in for a bit, mm-hmm. you know, probably the, I'm hoping to go like in a little more like two, two months or two days a month, like, yeah. like you, yeah. maybe three. Um, 
but yeah, it'd be nice to be able to get like a three day shoot and just come back home. Yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. yeah that's work as a local. I got enough boys up there that can yeah. host me. And ironically, we did have some companies that worked out of Burbank. So yeah. I did go up there for some of those meetings, but uh-huh. like, in specifically, but yeah. it's like, you know, LA Ooh. current or upcoming projects or audience and uh, our audience should know about. Ooh. Well, I was just going to say on that last one, um, when we're really balling, we'll just be flying into Burbank. So it makes sense, you know, just from here, from San Diego, yeah, Carlsbad, Palomar to, uh, to Burbank on the PJ. Love it. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Sorry. Yeah. No. So any upcoming projects or things that our audience should know about? I don't know if I have anything I'm allowed to talk about. The I, film festival. Same, I, I think that's a good one. Like I, I can talk about that because it's because yeah. I'm the only person that's doing anything like that's doing it right now. And so I'm not going to get mm-hmm. mad at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm on like a couple NDAs right now, but I can say. The stuff I like personally am working on or want to work on, like mm-hmm. that's that's in the writing process. Mm. We'll share details because. uh I'll share like the vibe and I want to really capture something in Vista or San Diego, Southern California um, that blurs the line between documentary and like cinema (laughs) and do it in a way that's just like relevant to the present moment. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just want to start making that a habit of going out and shooting kind of scenes that that feel big Mm -hmm. one thing i love about san diego is san francisco's been done la's been done new york's been done my all of it's been done the 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 skyline in san diego is 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 for the taking Mm -hmm. uh cinematically Mm -hmm. in my opinion no one's really done it right and i would love for a new wave of hollywood to move here yeah. For my own personal, like, you know, uh, reasons, obviously yeah. like it'd benefit me if all my homies, you know, all my DPs were ready to go mm-hmm. around here. But, um, you know, I'm in striking distance so I can convince them to, to come down. Um, and yeah. Uh, oh, other than that, I'm actually going to just put this out there. So I forced myself to do it. Cause I've yeah, been saying I'll right. do it in like two, two years, like two years ago. My, I want to film both my grandmothers, I want to interview them. I want to get into this shit that I know has happened in their, in, in their lives. And I want them to explain it to me. And I want them to just have a heart to heart with my grandmas and, and go back as far as we can. Yeah. Um, and learn something like, kind of like this that I, except I won't be doing a one-on-one probably, but just, just, uh, learn some new things about them and, and hopefully have a little time capsule for, you know, potentially my grandkids or my kids. This podcast is brought to you by yourinsuranceplace.com. Owning a business is hard work. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into it every single day. You need a partner who understands the ins and outs of insuring small to medium sized businesses. For over 40 years, our California property and casualty insurance agency has insured businesses just like yours. We've seen it all and we've learned a thing or two about what it takes to keep your business protected. That's why we offer free policy assessments. We'll take a look at your policy and let you know if there are any gaps in your coverage. Let us help you to protect what you've worked so hard to build. Yourinsuranceplace.com. Hi, I'm Rachel Beld, host of Velocity, the Vista Chamber podcast. Join me as I sit down with Vista's movers, shakers, and change makers. Let's move Vista forward with velocity. It's surprising how little sometimes you know about direct family members. Yeah. Like, you know, like you learn so much later in life and it's like, it's, yeah. it's so cool. I, uh, I, I wish I had like this from like my grandpa, you know, mm-hmm. he, he passed when I was like 10 or 11 or something. And yeah. like. I remember him, but I don't know if my memories are fooling me, you know, right. and it's like when you're young, you remember a that. tone. Yeah, they do that. They do that your whole life, yeah. which oh, is the scary thing. That's true, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess I so I have a uh, film that we're working on. Um, it's kind of been leaked a little bit. So like I can probably like do some mm-hmm. general stuff. We're doing one on um, um, his name's Scott Mendez. He's a world champion bull rider. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so we're doing a, um, it's not a documentary, but it's going to be like a film based on his life roughly. Oh, cool. And so, cause he, he had like, you know, I was talking to him and he was telling me about his, his life story. And I was like, that's a film. Like that's a movie. You nice. know, and so like we have to do the cinema thing, right? Like, because it happened over multiple years, we have to kind of squeeze down the time frame and stuff just so it like works timing wise in a movie. But like all the the beats were there. He's like basically going through the hero's journey, right? And I'm just like cracking up. I'm like, that's that's. I was like waiting for that beat, and here it is. You know, wow. <laughs> so. I'm always um, waiting for that documentary character to just pull up. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, let's go. Yeah. He's like, we just had mutual friends and, you know, mm-hmm. so we, we started talking and he's world champion in like 1997. So, you know, it's been a little while and, you know, but he's, so he's had like the epilogue to that story, yeah. right? Like, you know, and so like what, you know, what he's done with his life since then and all that. So are you focused on documentaries cool. pretty heavily right now or no? Uh, no, I think most of our films are not. Like yeah. most of our projects aren't documentary. Um, we will do documentaries and we've, we've done a few in the past. Um, and so like we can do them, but I think that a lot of times films and documentaries doc, it, it's very interesting. Cause if you do something as a documentary, you're directly te- like putting forth an idea, but you can kind of talk about subjects sometimes a little easier if it's not a documentary, which is very yeah. interesting. So like one of my favorite things about like sci-fi or fantasy, like those kind of genres is you can talk about subjects that like you can approach them in a, in a world that does not exist. So you're not emotionally attached to the subject. Right. And so yeah. like you can approach really difficult, hard to talk about subjects in a unique way and talk about like, you know, philosophy or mm-hmm. morality or all these different things using basically examples and stuff that you, you couldn't use because there's, you're too close to them. Right. Yeah, it packs a deeper punch. Yeah, and so, a, like, I really like that about some of those genres. And so I think that some of these types of projects you can do, like, you can learn about, like, philo- philosophical, moral topics, things like that, like, a, like even easier sometimes through um, narrative. Which yeah, is I 100% <laughs> agree. I 100% agree. I go back and forth sometimes, though, because right now it seems like the truth is stranger than fiction That's, in yeah. this world, and mm-hmm. I think it's cool. That's why I want to blur the line. That is fun. And but I, mean, I feel like... I'm I'm being a uh an an a hole a bit because it's like you're just messing with people in, in an age where like they don't like reality is just getting getting I mean I also uh, weirder really, and weirder. That was one thing I really enjoyed was like like the Anthony Bourdain stuff, like those like those travel channel like those things where like you had the person traveling the world and you'd get those mm-hmm. big shots, right? Those like beautiful, like yeah, like invite like a uh, establishing shot kind of things. And so you'd get the big cinema like cinematic kind of feel, but it was also like I mean kind of the oh, equivalent he killed of like that show. He killed that yeah. show, man. Yeah. His I don't know if he was like editing his voiceover script right. um, or wrote it all himself. But I, I know he was involved because right. he's a powerful writer. Yeah. Powerful man was. Yeah. And some of those monologues like straight up go off and yeah. it's just about food. And you're just like, Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll follow this guy to war, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So great. <laughs> he's so cool. I, I, when you talk about like, you know, blurring the lines between like, yeah. like, you know, narr story and, and, and documentary, that stuff yeah. kind of comes to mind where it's like those big, um, awesome, like shots of like mm-hmm. these cultures and stuff. So colorful, so cinematic. And then yeah. like, you know, but then you're talking about a very specific subject like food and getting really technical on it and stuff. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I kind of like that stuff too. Like that's really fun. Yeah, definitely. Fun concept. <laughs> I would love it if like someone like pulled up in a documentary and it was like, the documentary, but then all of a sudden it's like a midnight in Paris scene where some chick from from the 1930s just pulls up into your documentary. You know, I think that'd be funny. It would be. It would be. I mean, especially if you like had her like reading basically like quotes from something, right? So yeah. it's like it's still real. It's true, but I it's mean, like yeah. you know that's kind of already that's, happening that's on fun. TikTok or like yeah, Instagram every day with all this uh, mm-hmm. all this like internet e celeb stuff. They're they're all acting. That's true. Everything's a stage. To Absolutely, them. you're a character, right? Yeah. All right. How can the network one-on-one audience reach out to you? That's a, well, I can, that one's, that one's actually pretty easy for me. Like we have our, our websites are princebury.com is our um, film production company. Uh, Princebury Productions Media is the name of the company. Um, and Star Fox Media is the video production and marketing company. Uh, and I'm, uh, we, if you do info at either of those, I'm, I'm pretty much, I made the websites and stuff. So I get all that stuff. And, cool. um, um, but yeah, so that one's, that's pretty easy for me. 
Um, or you can follow us on social medias um, for either Princebury or, you know, Star Fox Media. So um, I'm sure if you search Star Fox Media or Princebury, will pop up. I don't remember my ads. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I, I, I don't post too much social media, um, but I, I'm not DM shy if I see it. Mm -hmm. Like I'll go on Instagram maybe once a week and check in, but um, website just www.spencerhoard.com. And there you go. That's it. It's uh, I should have Insta there and email. That's true. You go to those websites and they usually get the social links. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah, that's a good way of finding it. Find me. <laughs> yeah. Most people, most people trying to get a hold of me either just email me there or DM me on Instagram. Yeah. Send so. me a telegraph to, yeah. uh, you know, that'd be cool. That'd I, be I want a fax a machine. Telegraph. Yeah, a fax. Hit my beeper. Yeah. I, I do order food from this <laughs> Amish guy in Pennsylvania and he does a fax machine. Like that's their like loophole into the future because they're Amish. I, I love it. And it broke. And so I mean, like didn't get my order. And I was like, it's so funny that a fax machine breaking is like the like happening in, you have to do in, it in 2023. <laughs> I love it though. I love it. That was, that was fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We do good Zeke. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. And in the episode, you heard Jeff mention the Strawberry Film Festival. So I want to give you guys some details about the festival just in case you're interested in sending in a submission of your own. Now, you can submit your film between April 1st and May 14th. Official selections will be shown at the Film Hub on Sunday, May 28th, 2023. There is just a $25 entry fee and the award categories are Judge's Choice, Best Documentary, Best Narrative, and the prize will be a $500 gift card for the Film Hub Sound Stages. Audience Choice Prize will be $250 cash. So again, for all of you film-friendly folks, check out the Strawberry Film Festival and send in your submission. Thank you for listening.